First time ever. Ever. All right, the next match. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be a TVZ between Skyline and True Touch. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to talk about this as we go into the game. But basically, this is a rematch from uh, from TLS where Skyline actually knocked True Touch out, um, beating him in the losers match in that game where we actually didn't see the whole game because it was a bug to replay. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's interesting. So anyway, Skyline's going to be the uh, the yellow Terran at the top right, and True Touch will be the white Zerg here at the bottom. And Skyline doesn't know what's going on. Wait, what's what's happening? I wasn't watching the chat. What what are they complaining about? What is the problem? Maybe it's lagging or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so it'd be cool if True Judge can get some revenge here. Um, yeah, I mean Skyline, of course, our uh, bronze medalist from the TLS. Making a sick reverse 3-2 comeback against Eon Zerg after being 0-2 down. Really, really good stuff there. Um, so yeah, True Touch can have his work cut out for him. Of course, True Touch one of the top four in his Zergs right now at the moment anyway. So I'm sure he can handle it. Uh, the map is, of course, Tau Cross, which is quite interesting. So there's not going to be a super easy third base for him to hold. I mean, he can take another main, but as you can see, um, there's a bit of a narrow choke here going into the main, but there's no ramp, and it's not. And there is some space for Marines to like scoot by if you just leave two lurkers in the back here. So uh, a little bit, a little bit difficult to handle that. In the meantime, this is SCV Scout going in the right direction, Overload Scout also going in the right direction, so that's all fine and dandy. And it's going to be a 12 hatch here. Uh, one thing you got to be slightly careful about when you 12 hatch is uh, the Terran can actually build a supply depot here, which is uh, Zergling tight. So there are some kind of you know cute cheeses where you block that with a depot and just bunker rush the natural. Uh, it's pretty annoying for, for Zerg actually. Uh, so you just got to be a little bit aware of that. But it doesn't look like Skyline is in fact going to do anything like that. And meanwhile the drone scout is going to go in the wrong direction of course, but I don't think he'll mind too much. He'll much rather have the overlord in the correct direction. Curiously he's actually going all the way up here. He's going to be a little bit careful not to go in too far. He can get sniped by some marines. I mean there are some bits of walls here. I think kind of run over here behind the natural and scoot back around. No, it looks like he's just going to turn back around. Okay, straight away. Looks like SCB guy has stolen some minerals. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how the, uh, the the stats of this map are, but um, just you know, from a cursory glance, I would say it's not too bad for Terran. As I already said, not super duper easy to get that to just hold that third base with a couple of lurkers uh, for the Zerg, and also it's a pretty wide open middle of the map. Like, there's actually not that many terrain features. You know, there are these bridges at the front that you have to cross, but once you get over a bridge, it's like really, really super open. Uh, which means that Terran actually has a lot of space to just run around and you know dodge lurkers and dodge dark swarms, and and, and all that good jazz. So if you have good medic marine control, um, you can really kind of abuse the open spaces on this map against Zerg. I think. My general impression also is that we haven't actually seen that many Zergs on this map in Gambit's Cup. We've seen a lot more Prolosses and Terrans. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually true or not. I can quickly have a look at the map stats here, but I just that's just my my general feel. Uh, of Tau Cross. If I have a look here, well, actually, no, that's not true. There's been a, there's been a few, there's been a decent number of Zerg on this map. There's, uh, interestingly, there's been four PVPs on this map though, which is quite fun. Um, actually, there's another map that's four PVPs. Oh, it looks like Fighting Spirit also has four PVPs. Yeah, got a surprising number of PVPs in uh, Gamma's Cup. Hey, we got a, uh, is that eight links? That is in fact eight Zerg links coming out. So it looks like True Touch up to no good, but Skyline sees it coming and uh, very smartly pulls his SCVs to help block here. Gotta be ooh. Be careful, it's not actually tight there on in that gap, but um, I think he'll be okay here. Oh, well, he's got to be careful with the micro. Oh man, this is really, really tense here. Marine STV on Zergling looks like, oh, grabs three of those Zerglings for free though. Bit of a blunder there for Pike, or sorry, for True Touch, excuse me. Uh, I wonder if his Lings actually got caught on the STV a little bit that was building and just got stacked and bugged out or something. In the meantime, we do have a second barrack, so it is going to be two racks, a CAD from, uh, from Mr. Skyline. Facing the 3-hatch opening of Crutage. 
The SCV is still poking around in the main. Looks like these Zerglings are going to come back and try and deal with that SCV. Of course, they didn't really kill anything, but they did force a, good, a few SCVs off the line for a little while, so, you know, sort of made up their cost a little bit. I still think it's probably a little bit better for Skyline, though, having not lost anything. And he can, of course, immediately just send the SCVs to mine at his natural anyway. And uh, actually, it looks like instead of going for the Academy straight away, he's gone 2 racks and then Engineering Bay. And now that I think about it, this is actually the kind of uh, the strategy, the build, that he used in TLS as well. Um, it's a little bit curious. Usually when you see the second uh, barracks before the gas, you go you see the Academy next rather than the eBay. If you want to go for a fast plus one eBay, it's usually barracks and then refinery and then eBay to get a super fast plus one and then like four or five racks. But Skyline seems to kind of go for a middle ground here between those builds. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how efficient this is, but you know, players have their own styles. And it looks like True Touch actually making a lot more Zerglings here. He does have speed as well now, so he can definitely do some damage. But, I mean, this is a really nice little uh, semi-wall here. It's not Obviously, it's not tight anywhere, but it doesn't really matter. You just want to build the buildings to prevent things from surrounding you. But look at this! Skyline is deciding to move out here. This could be very, very dangerous since True Touch already has all these speed things. It's like Skyline isn't going to move out too far. I think he just wanted to scare True Touch a little bit and clear any scouting, SCB, uh, sorry, scouting links that were here, which, of course, there were. Um, so that, you know, keeping, keeping Zerg in the dark a little bit, I, I like that move. Definitely got to be very careful though, uh, although of course he doesn't know that there's all those speed links on the map. Looks like Factory on the way, Stim on the way as well, and uh, where's the lair? Uh-oh, uh-oh, we've got some lurkers. Three hatch lurker link here from True Touch. Actually, from what I remember, um, I think Day9 said that that was his preferred opening on this map instead of going for Muta's. Uh, because there's not, not actually that much terrain to abuse, and I mean, the natural expansion, it's got these bits of high ground behind it, but still, um, it's very difficult to harass the main, it's got, you know, a lot of space in it, and, uh, and of course, there's not that much terrain in the middle of the map, so when the Medic Marine Force does move out, it's a little bit hard to deal with them. Um, so yeah, I think, I think going for a Lurker Ling, actually, in the mid-game is not, um, too uncommon on this map, and, oh my god, he's going for drop! He's actually getting drop! I mean, there's a there's a high ground here that you can drop on, but for lurkers they'll only be able to range the gas. So I don't actually know where he's going to drop into. Just I mean, just drop into the main, I guess. But man, this is so interesting. But the, he doesn't actually have any overlords in position to drop into the main, which is why I'm confused. Like he's not actually moving, scooting overlords over to the top. But uh, yeah, lurker link, very very interesting. I think Day Nine actually said he went for Hydra lurker on this map or something, or maybe that was a different map. But definitely goes for the the lurker openings. Uh, and this this could be very very interesting. Now skyline. Is he building any turrets in his main? He's got one turret in the main, but it doesn't look like he's actually building that many turrets, so it seems that he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah, it looks like I think he just cancelled a turret there. It is natural mineral mine, so it looks like he knows uh, what's going on here. And meanwhile, the lurker eggs are morphing at the at the left side there in a bit of a hidden location, but again, I'm not 100% sure where the drop is going to be used. Uh, it looks like drop's about to finish here. He might just get speed next and go for some uh, you know, regular drops rather than some kind of sneaky slow drop. But uh, it could be very... I mean, I'm very curious to see where that goes. Meanwhile, third base is actually being taken in a close location rather than a far location because he's going to have a pretty uh, strong mid-game army here. Rather than relying on, you know, fancy Muta Harass to keep the Terran back, he's actually going to have the ground forces to stop a significant attack from the Terran anyway. It's like second bunker here for safety from the Skyline. Very, very standard when you see your opponent has open uh, with Lurkers. And uh, it looks like it is just going to be a drop onto this high ground here. I mean, you know, as I said before, it's going to get the gas... But, you know, Skyline can just mine the minerals, and, and gas isn't super important for a Terran and TBZ. I mean, since Skyline did open with a pretty quick starboard here off just the two barracks, um, he is using more gas than you might otherwise see uh, in a Terran going for bio. But, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure how how good this is going to be. So, yeah, he's going to be able to start raining down his gas. It's going to be super annoying. But actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if Skyline can just repair this from out of range of the Lurkers and keep mining from it anyway. I think he might be able to. Not really sure. But wow, looks like look at this. More lurkers actually coming up here onto the high ground. That's very interesting. Um, where's where's siege mode? Looks like siege mode. Eh, about halfway done. First vessel almost uh, almost coming out already though. Just want to attack them. Pulls an armor on the way. And oh oh, he might drop here into the back of the mineral line. That could be good. Although the marines are fairly close by anyway though, so I think he'll be able to deal with it. And especially with the vessel there, he should be okay. Uh, and with the turret there as well. I wonder if you just poke over here and drop them in the main and just kind of run over to the mineral line. Although, oh, look at this. Skyline very well prepared for that already. So that would actually be uh, not so good of an idea. I he's going to pull them out. In the meantime, though, third base is going up nice and steady. Plenty of lurkers on the field. See, this is what happens when uh, you don't go for the Spire tech. You actually have a ridiculous amount of gas. 
um, that you can spend on these lurkers. I mean, of course, basically each lurker costs, uh, I think, it costs the same gas as a uh, as a muta. Actually, wait, uh, no, it might be 25. Are they 125? Yeah, no, they're 125 gas rather than 100 because you got the cost of a hydroalisk as well. But um, but still, once you get a lot more uh, lurkers, if you're not going to make those initial, you know, nine to eleven mutas. In the meantime, this drop actually gets scattered by a random zergling there, so. Um, so Trudet should be aware of it, but he doesn't have a Spire finished yet, so he can't actually make Scourge to stop this. And actually, it looks like he didn't notice it. I guess the Zergling, either either he wasn't paying attention, or maybe the Zergling, uh, it was barely out of the Zergling's sight range, but now this drop is going into the main base, and uh, it doesn't look like Trudet has too much here to defend it just yet here. His main army is all the way outside, he's running the Zerglings back, but it does take a little while for the Lynx to come back, and they have to kind of run around through the natural, and it looks like, oh man, gonna get a few drone kills here, gonna snipe a Hydra, maybe get a Lurker as well for free. Nope, so just gonna run into the back here, try and get a better position, and man, this drop doing a good amount of damage against crew touch can he take it down it looks like oh getting a bit stuck but running back into the dropship and again because the spire hasn't finished yet the scourge only just now will be able to be produced where are the scourge being made he's got to make some scourge somewhere to deal with this dropship uh, or it's just gonna be super duper annoying and here we go dropping again in the natural we're gonna get some more kills looks like i uh, didn't actually quite drop properly you're just gonna leave that one uh, hero marine actually got seven kills there and uh, now just gonna oh he's gonna drop on the high ground he's gonna harass the gas do exactly what true touch tried to do to him here uh, is he actually only mining? No, he's mining with three on this gas. Okay, looks a little bit weird, but I think it's just because of uh, the way the, the natural placement is. Anyway, look at this, being very, very careful. Bunker in the back, just in case there's more drop shenanigans going back there. I really, really like that. It's not a very big investment, and uh, it just helps you so, so much against, you know, some very small 8-ling or, or 2 lurker drops, which are so uh, cost-efficient for the Zerg. It's actually ridiculous how much just a single drop of 8 Zerg can do in the back of your base. Oh my god, no! Stop! Go back! Oh my god, dude, Skylar, what are you doing? Where's your vessel? Where's his vessel? Okay, there's the vessel. Jesus, that could have been bad. They wouldn't even stop lurkers, and he still lost a bunch of marines. Oh, man. Alright, well, looks like he's got, he's got control of himself again. Whoa, running that tank pretty far forward. A couple of raids going down, but look at this. A big army setting up to go in, and here we go. The lurkers in the back. He's setting up the flank, and it looks like the Ling's not quite wrapping around the units, and, oh man, does pick off the couple of siege tanks here, not even that second siege tank, only gets the one, oh no, he's gonna get that one, is he gonna get that one, yes, gets three of the siege tanks, uh, but loses all the lings, losing a few of the lurkers, and didn't quite go as planned, but looks like he's gonna be able to hold the other side of this bridge, uh, however, in the meantime, Scotland getting another base, his money is getting a little bit high, but of course, it's pretty hard to macro uh, very well, uh, you know, when you're going SK Terran, those marines pop out pretty quickly, really should have a few more barracks though, he's only on five right now, uh, going up to three base. Oh, he's immediately going for factories. I see. Okay, so he's immediately going for factories instead of getting more barracks. Gonna pretty quickly go for that mech uh, mech switch. Meanwhile, we already have a greater spire as well as consume on the way in that defiler mound and a few mutas coming out here. But where are they gonna go though? Where there's not that many great places for defilers. It's not a, like uh, like on Fighting Spirit where you just park a few defiler. Sorry, guardians rather. Excuse me. It's not it's not like Fighting Spirit where you can just park a few guardians behind the natural and just get ridiculous amount of kills. Uh, it, it, there's actually not as many good spots here on, on Tower Calls. Of course, I think you still, there's a still small area behind the third as well as behind the natural there uh, on that high ground that you can use, but uh, it's not quite as nice as, as some other maps. Anyway, in the meantime, Skyline continues to, to abuse the fact that uh, Trudech's main kind of faces his natural uh, to, to keep doing these drops. So that one's going to get cleaned up fairly easily, and uh, he's having some difficulty making his way across this wide bridge here. Um, oh, gotta be careful. Oh, man, dude, Skyline. He's, he's running around, like, not even caring at all, and actually found a, find a, uh, finds a little bit of a, an opening here, loses one of the vessels, but oh man, there's not that many links supporting, the links are coming in now, but the lurkers are not in the best position here, and it looks like Scotland's gonna be able to take these down, True Dodge with only links remaining, no lurkers, I don't think this is gonna be a good idea, I mean, these marines, oh, there's a Dark Swarm, there's a Dark Swarm, Scotland's not pulling back, but it looks like it doesn't matter, there's only a single lurker down there, he's killed everything else, what is that, that's a radiant, okay, that's a defiler, just standing in the middle of the club of marines, he's gonna run straight past that, and this is what I'm talking about, Dark Swarms have such a difficult time controlling space on Tau Cross because there is so much of it. You can easily run around this and move over to the third here, and this is going to be so difficult for Drew Dutch to actually stop this. There is the Dark Swarm. He's going to be able to hold off a little bit longer, but again, the Marines just scoot right on by. They can even go around the left side. A random defiler getting irradiated there on the side as well. More reinforcements are coming in for Skyline. His third base is mining away happily. I don't see any Guardians morphing anywhere or anything. It's like one random Guardian morphed in the main base. I don't know what the point of that is. In the meantime, Marines just being ridiculously efficient here, taking out all these lanes who don't have the support of the Dark Swarm. And 
and uh, True Touch is looking like he's in a bit of trouble. Looks like nice defense matrix there. One random Guardian here at the front of the natural is going to help out. The Marines are not helping out their Sea Shank buddies, but it doesn't matter. They're going to be able to kill the third base, and that's going to put True Touch back on two bases against two bases here. Really looking difficult for the uh, the Polish Zerg. So he's got one drone at the left side, going to maybe just try and take a, retake a third over there. But uh, as it stands, he is in seriously bad shape against Skyline here. Skyline, meanwhile, doing the mech switch, getting, fa uh, getting those factory units. He is still pumping Medic Marine, though, so he hasn't uh, completely switched over. He's kind of doing a, a semi-transition here, just going to go for kind of bio-mech play before he switches over into full, bi or, sorry, full mech. But yeah, whatever he decides to do, I think, um, he's kind of got this game in the bag. It's going to be, you know, pretty difficult for, for True Dutch to do anything now. Let's see, 80 supply, it's 130. Um, he's, got, he's got a few Guardians here, but, uh, I mean, Guardians on the open field, again, they're going to be quite vulnerable to Marines just running up and sniping them. He's going to really have to make sure he uses these Lings and the Defiler underneath to cover these Guardians to prevent the Marines from running in. But it looks like, oh man, there might even be enough vessels to just irradiate everything. Nice D-Matrix on the leading Marine, actually. Firebats just murdering all the Zerglings. It doesn't matter that there's Dark Swarms there, and oh my god, these Guardians are just mincemeat. Free... Pickings for the Marines. A couple of lurkers coming in, but way too late. Random D Matrix Firebat. Looks like not even gonna actually use it. He's gonna run away home. Um, just gonna use a radiates to pick off everything. Looks like meanwhile True Touch has actually taken the space to the left side. Gonna also expand to the third here. He really, really needs those additional bases to take on the Terrence 3 base. And uh is that guy also radiated? Yes, he is indeed. Looks like a few things running around the back to see uh, if the Terrence tried to take this mineral only. Meanwhile, look at this! Just kind of actually expanded to this natural base while the Zerg's taking the main, so that's going to be a little bit awkward later on. Of course, this is actually going to be much easier for the Zerg to defend, I think, with running his Lings over there. Uh, but but either way, oh my god, what? <laughs> Skyline does not give a shit. Oh, you already took that base with a hatchery? No problem, dude. I'll, I'm sure I'll kill it later and be able to take it down. GG from True Touch and Skyline puts Sass on the scoreboard here. But, man, they, they are still down here. It's 1-2, still in favor of Net Wars. And I like it. I like it. Top two teams. Duking it out. Mmm, exciting. So. Looks like... <laughs> oh, man, this, this is going to be silly. So, um, <laughs> the next match is going to be a PvP between Mazur and Lockdog. Man, I don't know how these guys keep getting the worst matchup. So first we got Busy trying to play a TVP, like clearly his worst matchup. And then now Mazur playing a PvP, the only matchup he doesn't know how to play. Oh, this is gonna be bad. I, I just know it already. This is just gonna be it's gonna be terrible. So for those of you who don't know, Mazur of course is a uh, is a PVZ specialist. Um, he specializes in slaying the evil Zerg. 